All right, so we are group D and we are presenting on the Metamorphosis by Franz Kafka. So a little bit about Franz. He was born July 3rd of 1883 into a large Jewish family in what is now the Czech Republic. So the large family that he was part of had Franz plus his two brothers as well as his three sisters. Um, Franz had a very strained relationship with his father. Um, so as you read the Metamorphosis, this is a good thing to keep in mind because that may have had an impact on his writing as well as the rest of his literature. Um, Franz wrote on the side of his professional career. He went to school to become a lawyer and ended up writing as a hobby on the side because his dad would not allow him to make a career out of it. Franz could often be found working with the law and insurance during the day to make a living and then he'd be writing late into the night. Very few of Franz's pieces were popular until long after his death. Franz never considered himself a successful author because of this, although he did win many prestigious literary awards following his death. So prior to his early death at the age of 40, Franz was working on three long novels. As he was dying from tuberculosis, Franz asked that each of his novels be burned because they were incomplete, so he didn't want people to read them but Franz's friend went against his request and published them following his death. These three novels known as The Trial, The Castle, and America are what went on to gain him popularity along with some of his short stories such as The Metamorphosis. And by the time the Second World War was taking place, Franz Kafka was already recognized as one of the greatest writers of the age. Kafka once wrote that his goal in writing was to reconnect people with feelings through writing that might otherwise be unbearable to talk about, which might have some explanation as to why a lot of his writings were about very dark and um, just sad topics. And the word Kafkaesque was coined as a term to describe a nightmarish world, which Kafka often described in his writing. So just a fun fact that he had a word created after his last name. So some themes and lessons learned about the human condition. Um, there's many different themes that I um, found throughout um, the story, but um, some of the few that stuck out the most was um, the theme of loss of, I, oh, sorry, loss of identity. So even though Gregor changes into a bug, but he's able to keep his mind straight. Um, there are some examples of these moments that he lost his identity um, as the author reflected on various moments. One of these events was when his manager had threatened that he was gonna come and visit him and Gregor was unable to respond. So um, all he could do was squeal. So with that, it kind of reflects that his identity changed along with his physical appearance. Um, in return, he also loses his importance. So a few things that he had lost um, along with his identity. Um, another theme was social isolation. So Gregor stays isolated from his social circle. When faced with isolation, um, he is a force to adjust a lot of different things. And one of those being permanent isolation with even his own family. He also tries to adjust um, since there's no longer like financially head of the household. So he was, didn't feel like he was worth anything because he couldn't be like man of the house, so to speak. So um, that caused him to feel isolated. Another theme was family responsibility. So as Gregor, um, Gregor listens to his family's conversation, he'll kind of sit and listen to them in his mind um, he, as a bug, he thought he thinks of ways to come out of the situation so that he can return to work because he still wants to take care of his family. He wants to still be responsible um, and feel head of the household. Um, another theme um, was sense of guilt. Um, guilt sets in with Gregor when he, he turns into a bug, losing his job and not being able to provide for his family um he at one point he actually felt like that he would be better off dead than alive so next slide yeah so some things that were going on in this area and time period was the middle class became extremely popular before this 
there was mostly just the high nobility people of great esteem and then the lower class people that were like the poor people are just shoved off to the side but with an increase in jobs made by the war and mass production of people wanting to buy lots of things with their money the middle class could more easily find jobs and earn a living and support their families with this money they were able to buy more things like well tvs were not yet i don't think but things like automobiles and they could go to the movies and not stress about if they had enough money or they could buy a cake for their um wedding or their birthday parties and that, that was very nice for them to have um broadcast media the first broadcast radio actually started so it could reach large audiences and people could be aware of what was going on around the world and not just through a newspaper they could actually hear it automobiles first came out in the 1890s to 1910s for people to buy it in the middle class was finally able to afford these although it was hard at first they finally became through the mass production of things and then the world war one started in 1940 uh, 1914, and this started the Atomic Age and lots more wars to come. Um, some biblical and spiritual insights um, that I found from this was that um, Gregor did not value himself, and the Bible speaks about um, not valuing yourself in many different passages. And just a couple of those that I pulled was um, Genesis 1, 26 through 27. It says that we are all made in his image, the very image of God. And also Psalms 139, 13 through 16 says that we are fearfully and wonderfully made and that all the days of our lives were written in God's book before they were before we were even born. So these are just some quotes that I pulled from the text. I would not consider these inspirational quotes because I don't consider this to be an inspirational text. Um, but I do think that these quotes have a lot of meaning and a lot of value to the story as a whole. So the first one is, did he really want to have this warm room, comfortably furnished with family heirlooms, transformed into a cave or den, in which, to be sure, he would be able to crawl around unhindered in every direction, but at the price of simultaneously, swiftly and completely forgetting his human past. So I think this quote does a good job of symbolizing the struggle that Gregor's human consciousness has with his insect body. So even though he is in the form of an insect and he's not able to express himself as a human through speech, he does still have the mind of a human. But in this quote, um, I think it's the first time that Gregor really realizes that he might be losing this part of himself as well. Um, so the second quote is, was he a beast that music so moved him? He felt as if he were being shown the way to that unknown nourishment he craved. So this quote is said when Gregor is crawling down the hallway and sneaking in the shadows to listen to his sister playing the violin. Um, so throughout pretty much the entire story, we see Gregor as depressed and lonely, sort of locked away in his room. Um, and he's not really able to experience anything that brought him peace or happiness. Um, until at this point when he finally hears his sister playing the violin and he recognizes something from his past that brings him happiness but it is quickly taken away from him when the roommates notice his presence and his sister stops playing the violin. So the last quote is, it has to go, Gregor's sister cried out. That's the only way, father. You just have to try to let go of the notion that this thing is Gregor. The real disaster is that we believe this for so long. So throughout the entire story, Gregor's sister is caring for him and taking really a lot of extra measures to make sure he's comfortable. She brings him food, she makes sure that he's eating, she makes sure he's, she's bringing food that he enjoys eating, um, and she just does a lot to make sure that he's comfortable and that he's kept well and happy, but 
she sort of reaches her breaking point at the end and she doesn't see Gregor anymore as her brother, but she, in this quote, refers to him both as it and as that thing. So um, this quote sort of symbolizes the point where the family stops having hope that Gregor will ever return to his human form. So these are some literary terms that I found especially common in the text. The first one is imagery, which is defined as language that produces pictures in the minds of people reading or listening. So I put this picture on the slide because I feel like it sort of captures um, an especially strong point of imagery in the text, which is a quote on page 995, which says, he was lying on his back, which was hard like a carapace. And when he raised his head a little, he saw his curved brown belly segmented by rigid arches atop which the blanket, already slipping, was just barely managing to cling. His many legs, pitifully thin compared to the rest of him, waved helplessly before his eyes. So just reading that, um, I was able to come up with pretty much this exact same picture in my mind, um, even though I had never seen this drawn before. So that I felt like was an especially strong example of imagery in the story. Um, another literary device that is used in the text is irony which is the funny or strange aspect of a situation that is very different from what you expect. So in this, uh, in this text, we have both situational irony and dramatic irony. So situational irony can be seen in the very intro to the story where Gregor wakes up and he's not really shocked at all that he's become a giant beetle. He's sort of out of it, maybe thinks he's dreaming. Um, but really the main issue on his mind is that he needs to get to work and he's running late. Um, however, we as the reader read this and think, oh my gosh, why is he a giant bug? What's going on? Um, so this is an example of situational irony. Um, and then there's also dramatic irony, which can also be found in the opening scene when Gregor's family and the general manager are knocking at his door and saying, what are you doing? What's wrong? Why aren't you getting up for work? Um, and we know why Gregor isn't getting up for work. We know what's wrong. Um, but the characters on the other side of the door do not have this information. And then lastly, um, there's a sort of extended metaphor throughout the entire story, which is a word or phrase used to describe somebody or something else in a way that is different from its normal use in order to show that the two things have the same qualities and to make the description more powerful. So I feel like two good examples of this are the metamorphosis itself and sort of the metaphor of Gregor as a prisoner. Um, so as for metamorphosis, um, which is the title of the story, we see this represented in several different ways throughout the story. Uh, firstly, we see Gregor becoming, um, becoming an insect through metamorphosis in a physical way. Um, we also see the metamorphosis of the family dynamics in the home, um, where they sort of gradually care less and less about Gregor. Um, and then we see the metamorphosis at the very end of the story with his sister Greet turning into a woman and his family commenting on her eligibility for marriage. Um, and then, as I mentioned before, there's the metaphor, which isn't explicitly stated, but it's implied of Gregor as a sort of prisoner, and this is evidenced by the use of words such as captivity and imprisonment. So with the music of the time period, Aaron Copeland was very famous with this, and um, he was known as the Dean of American Composers. One of his famous pieces is Fanfare for the Common Man, and this was all during the modern era. Igor Stravinsky is one of the most influential composers of the modern era. Um, the Rite of Spring is one of his most famous orchestral pieces. Twelve tone compositions and music theory three, we spent almost a month going over this, <laughs> is a mathematical and logical relationship between the 12 tones of the chromatic scale. It is also called serialism. Atonality is very important in this and it comes from it doesn't really have a key, it just 
is what it is. And Arnold Schoenberg was very popular with this. And this is his piano concerto 42. So in all that, you can't really find a starting note to go off of or any certain pitches that you can um, name like Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Ti, Do. You can't really name any of them. With personal reflections and responses, I was kind of confused on why his sister was the one who wanted to take care of him and why his parents didn't really step up to the plate with that because I feel like in most families, it's the parents' job to take care of the kids, and the siblings are just part of the family and help like chores and stuff, but don't really take on the full care of like raising their siblings unless they're forced to. I was also unsure of why he was okay with being a bug. I personally would not wake up and just think, I'm a bug, I might as well go with it. So I'm not really sure why he thought that was normal and why, when he knew he wasn't dreaming, why he went along with it and wanted to start his day. I was sad that it wasn't all a dream at the end because I felt like I needed some resolution and some reassurance at the end that everything was okay. So if I were to choose one word to sum up this story, it would be disheartening. Um, I really felt like it was sort of a depressing story. I kept waiting for something happy to happen or just anything good, and it never came. Um, along with this, I thought that Gregor would turn back into a human, or like Kristen said, I thought maybe it was a dream that he would just wake up from, but um, that was not the case. Um, and then lastly, I think that the story would have been a lot happier and a lot more bearable to read if Gregor's family had accepted him or at least acknowledged him as their, you know, former brother and son. He was a part of their family and they just sort of forget that, I feel like. So I feel like this detail would have made the story more pleasant. So some things that I was thinking about while reading was, I wondered how Kafka's, as the author, his childhood impacted um, the story of the metamorphosis and the rejection that happens within the family um, between Gregor and his sister and his parents. Um, and I also found it interesting how Gregor's personality, um, which was described when he was a human, how that closely related to how we would expect um, an insect would be. So the impact that that might have had on him turning into an insect rather than something else. So um, for me, I was just saddened by the thought again that Gregor had lost value in, value in himself and just for anybody to lose value in themselves is just overall just sad. Um, so Gregor's metamorphosis to me symbolizes like any sort of physical change that anybody um, could endure. So this assumption that like our daily lives proves that no matter like what our successes, our parents, or our social matter, that it could be lifted from us at any time. So, and that also that uh, Gregor, that had felt like he would be better off dead, so. So we came up with some discussion questions. The first one is, why do you think Gregor so easily accepted his new insect form and way of life? The second one is, why do you think Gregor's family was so repulsed by him and unwilling to care for him? The third one is, 
how do you think Gregor's insect form reflects his personality? Lastly, how do you think the author's personal life represents itself in this story? And those are our references.